Hi again, it's Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. Here's another video by request. Uh, many people have asked about this topic, about how to make a password protected page or pages in 90 Second Website Builder. And I'm going to do that here with a very, very simple pre-built website that shows you how to do that. Now, this is going to be in the event you want to create an area of your website or pages in your website that are password protected for just a few people. This is not the kind of a situation where you're going to have people, uh, you know, go to a place where they create a username and password and all that would have to be stored in a database. This doesn't use a database. This is a very simple password protection script uh, that you can use. I would suggest this is something you may use, might use if you have, say, 10, 12, 15, or even maybe 20 people that you want to give access to a particular part of your website. I would not recommend you do this if you wanted hundreds or thousands of people to have password protection because it would make it pretty impractical. That would require a different kind of password protection, probably the use of a database, and that'll have to be done in a different video. And frankly, that will be more complex. This one's simple. Okay, so how does it work? Well, first of all, the good news is we've already built a password protected website for you. It's just a real simple five page website that's got all the password protection stuff built into it. All you have to do is kind of dress it up and make, make it look pretty. You get to do the fun part, put all your content in this. I'm going to show you how it works and the pages that you'll need to know are there so you can dress them up and so that you can edit them just a little bit. Below this video, if you're watching it in the 90 Second Website Builder members area, below this video there is a download link. It's a zip folder and that zip folder is a password protected website. In fact, what you'll do is you'll download the zip folder and unzip it. I'll show you what it looks like. I've downloaded it here on my desktop. So here's the zipped up folder called password protect. You're going to want to unzip it or extract it and you'll end up with a folder like this. Now inside this folder uh, is the WBS file. Let me open that. In my case, there's also a login folder. You won't see that because you haven't launched it yet. All you'll, all you'll see is this file right here. That's called the WBS file. In other words, it's a 90 second website builder project. So to use this, frankly, you can just double click on it and open it. But what I suggest you do is that you first store it in a spot where you can work with it later. So in my case, uh, my documents folders right here and you'll have inside your documents folder a folder called 90 second website builder and this is where all of your 90 second website projects are stored so I suggest you drag this particular WBS file the password protect in here so that it just stays organized and stays with all of your 90 second website builder projects that way if when you open up the software and if you want to open up this website from there it'll be in its right place so that's the simple part just download unzip Put that WBS file in your 90 Second Website Builder Projects folder, inside, which is inside your Documents folder, and you're ready to go. Okay, so whether you've opened it by double-clicking on it or you've opened it by launching 90 Second and you opened up this particular website, what you will see is what is on my screen right now. Let me move the camera so we can focus in on what we have here. So, this demo website is pretty plain. Like I said, there's not any graphics or images. That's for you to play around with. There are, in fact, though, five different pages, and I'll talk about those pages. The first one is the one you're looking at. It's just the index page, and this right here is just some instruction that happens to be in a text object that shows you basically how this works. So this page has an important link on it right here. It's this link right here. This link takes us to the login area that we're going to use. Now let's look at that login page because the other page that's on this is called login.php. I'm going to double click in the site manager and let's open that up. Here's the login area. And again, you're going to need to dress this up. These are some instructions you would delete. And um, on this page is everything we need to have a login area. This piece of code right here is already written for you, but what this does is this displays a message if the person tries to log in and they use the wrong username or password. This was built using the HTML tool. All we did was we drug in the HTML tool and we put this piece of code right here, which handles that error. So again, you don't have to do that because it's already there for you. Then we created a form and inside this form, we created a table inside the table. There is a field called username, a field called password, and then an object called login or a submit button called login. And what happens is when this form is filled out with the username and password and login is clicked, 
this page uses another page on the website to verify if the username and password are correct. And that page is called verify, verify.php. So that's one of the other pages. Let's double click on that one so I can show you what it looks like. Well, first of all, it looks blank because this page will never be seen by the end user. It's one of those web pages that just sits in the background and does the magic work for you. So you don't have to um, design this page. You will have to edit the code and I'll show you why. And again, there's some instructions in the demo here, which you can read. And when you're done with them, you can just delete that. But here's the way it works. I'm going to right click on the verify.php page and I'm going to look at the HTML code of it. At the very start of this page, and this is important that it's at the start of the page, this code is what handles the username and password. Now, it's already built with four usernames and four passwords, which you're going to want to change, delete, edit in any way that you can. You need to have at least one username and password for it to work, of course, and so it gives you these defaults. The first array, it's called, has four usernames, user one, two, three, and one called admin. You're going to want to change these and get, you know, or add to it if you need to or whatever. Each username corresponds with a password. So user one in this array corresponds with password one in this array. And the way that works is if you were to launch this site and, and put it online and test it, you would be able to successfully log in using user one and password one. You would not be able to log in using user one and password two because these correspond. The first item in this array corresponds with the first item in this array, and so on. User 2 works with password 2, user 3 with password 3, admin works with admin, etc. So again, you're going to want to change these. So if you only want one username and password, you would delete all of these. You would just keep the user 1 and password 1 and change them to what you want them to be, obviously. You can also add to this. You can just put a comma, a quote, and you can add user guy or whatever the, whatever the username is that you want. And then that, that username also needs a password. So we're going to go down here and add a password. And, you know, user pass, whatever. Obviously, you'd make it something more sensible than that. But now I have a one, two, three, four, five member login criteria. There's five members and usernames. There's five passwords. And these all correspond with the appropriate array. So... That's all you do. Set those up. And as you can see, this is why you wouldn't want hundreds or thousands of members in this particular case. This is just in the event you want a password protect for just a small number of people. Otherwise, this list would be humongous and it would at some point become impractical. And only you can create these username and password combinations. This is not something your user could come in and do. This is all hidden in the code. Also notice that the name of the page that we want them to go to after they log in is also stored here. In our case, it's called protectedpage.php. So if you've changed the name of your protected page, you need to make sure you update this part of the code too. Okay, so we've edited our verify.php page. Now, what happens when somebody goes to the login page and they correctly insert the username and password. It checks it against the verify PHP to see if it's there. And if it's successful, it takes them to the protected page. And here's the protected page. Again, there's no real content on it. That's what you have to do. Here's some instructions that you can delete when you're done with them. And this is basically where you're going to design your, your protected content. We've given you one protected page. And what makes this page protected is again some special code hidden in the HTML. I'll show you what it looks like. It's at the start of the page and it has this and again it has to be at the start of the page and this basically this code checks if anybody happens to find this page on the internet it will not let them in unless they're logged in and if they're not logged in it would send them back to login.php so that's basically what protects the page. That means you can protect as many pages as you want to. All you need is this code at the start of any page you want to have protected content. So one of the things you could do is you could just simply take this page when you want to have another protected page and just clone it. Just right click and go clone the page and then you could just rename it something else. And you can make as many protected pages as you want and as long as they have that code, they'll be protected and they will not be accessible unless the person successfully logs in from this page. 
Again, each page of this demo website has these instructions written down so you can reference them. So I would suggest you make a copy of this if you want to make a password protected area and just dress it up. Add all of your um, content, your images, and whatever you want to protect. Make it look prettier than this, obviously. Get rid of all these instructions. This just needs to be deleted. It's a text object that you can delete. And you've, you've got it. It's really that simple. Let me go back to the beginning so I can just again summarize this for you. Here I'm on the index page. Uh, the, these are the instructions again. So these are the five pages that make up this password protection script. The index page that we're on now, just kind of the starting page. Uh, the login.php. Notice these are PHP pages because they're running code. Also a logout PHP page, which I didn't show you. That's basically when somebody logs out, it closes the session for them. Let me show you what that looks like real quick just basically says you're now logged out. And the code on this page just basically shuts down the code in the background so that it, it, what, it, what it does is actually, it, it's called closing the session. And so they're no longer logged in. They would have to go back and re-log in to access the protected content, which there's a link to. Okay, so it's really simple. And I've done this as quickly, as succinctly as possible because honestly, the work is really already done. As long as you don't change the structure of the site or mess with the code too much, um, the only code you're going to want to mess with, of course, is the verify.php where you set the username and passwords. And then the rest of the work is all in you making it look nice and adding your content, getting rid of these instructions and putting your pictures on it. When it's all done and you're all ready, you can't preview this to test it because this is a PHP script and PHP has to run on a server. Your hosting account, of course, has to have PHP on it and most of them do. And then you can upload the script and test it. Now I've already uploaded this particular script to um, a domain called drag and drop site builder .com, and I put it in a folder called password test you know you could name this folder members or this might be your private area or whatever you want to whatever you want to use for your password protection we've landed of course on the index page this index page is the one we're on now I would click here to go to the login area and if you will remember I didn't change those so I'm gonna be able to get in with user one password one you're gonna want to change these of course so I'm typing in password one. When I log in, it took me right to the protected area. And when I log out, it says you are now logged out. And now I would have to re-log in. You can see I'm at the logout page. Let's go try that again. So let me do it again with the wrong password. If I go username one and I type in the wrong password, I'm just putting some gibberish in there. Watch what happens. Does not let me in. And it says username and password is incorrect. That was that little HTML code we had there. I've, I've published it and tested it online so we know that it works. So download your Password Protect website. Make it look nicer than this one because this one's pretty plain. And uh, you'll have a password protected area of your website.